Did you guys catch, because the whole Tom Brady, where's he going and what's he going to do and all that stuff. And this is where football, basketball, and even soccer do things that you'll never see in baseball, right? And yesterday, uh, did you catch the Julian Edelman tweet? So Julian Edelman tweets out uh, John Cusack oh, and yeah. say anything, and and it's his face holding up the the box, you know, and it says "Baby, come back," right about Tom Brady. And, and you know what? Julian Edelman may even know where Tom Brady's going. He's just maybe effing everybody, you know what I'm saying, and just having fun with this. Uh, or maybe he doesn't, and you know, maybe Tom uh, Tom Terrific hasn't told anybody, you know, and maybe only Giselle Bunchen knows exactly where where he's going. So, but it, these are the little things. Okay, look, I still think Brady goes back to the Patriots. I've told you that I think this is all a power move. When it's all said and done, I don't think this is anything more than that. I don't think he's going to play for the Raiders. I don't think he's going to play for the Chargers. None of that stuff. I don't even think he's going to take Jimmy Garoppolo's job in San Francisco, which was a really, really... I don't know if you guys heard this. There's a scenario. Dan Graziano on Get Up yesterday was talking about the scenario where... um, What's it called? Brady could end up going to San Francisco and take the job from uh, from Jimmy Garoppolo. The way the 49ers build their contracts it allows them to change course midstream if they decide to change the plan, upgrade at a position. And Jimmy Garoppolo's contract is no exception. There are three years left. Not a dollar of it is guaranteed. As of April 1st, $15.7 million of his $23.8 million salary this year becomes guaranteed. But April 1st is two weeks after the start of free agency, and it's no coincidence that the 49ers do their deals with that date as the trigger. So if, if Tom Brady wanted to go there, if the 49ers decided that Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't the guy, that they were a better fourth quarter quarterback play away from winning the Super Bowl two days ago, they could move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, owe him no more money, and replace him at quarterback. Now, I don't think that happens either. But again, there's another scenario, right, that people are talking about. I don't think so. I've said Tennessee and Chicago are the two best spots for him because I think they're ready-made. All they need is a you know a real quarterback. They don't have that there. So that would be an option too. And, you know, whatever. I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. When it's all said and done, I think he stays there. Now, this is not why I bring it up. I bring it up because... This is something that goes viral, right? Edelman tweets it out, and and then that thing obviously goes all over the country. Heck, all over the world, because you've got football fans all over the world that are interested in where Tom Brady is going to go, especially, I'm sure, Patriots players are obviously, I mean, Patriots fans all over the world are very interested in all of this. So by Edelman doing this and it going viral, it's on every newscast, all of that, it's been liked 74,000 times. It's been retweeted 12,400 times, okay? It's been commented on 832 times. So this thing obviously exploded, right? These are the things they don't do in baseball. They don't know how to bring attention to their game and their sport and have fun with social media. They're so out of touch with social media. They're so out of touch with millennials. They're way out of touch with Generation Zs. That's that's the younger crowd. Those people have no interest whatsoever in baseball. Very few kids. It's so minimal. And these little things... They know how to promote their sport. They know how to interact. Did you see the John Morant, uh, Steph Curry social media stuff that went on, right? The whole Iggy thing, Iggy's in jail there in Memphis. They don't let him out. They don't trade him, whatever, all that. And so, you know, Steph tweets out, 
you know, a, a picture with Iggy in the championship and, you know, basically saying, hey, he helped us win a championship, you know? This guy's a hell of a player. John Moran then tweets out Kevin Durant with the championship, you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of going back and forth with all this. And, and again, that's fun. It goes viral that you've got the players going out and having fun with this thing. And it, it's not anything like super personal or anything like that, but it's still kind of taking little digs at each other. But in the process, you're putting your sport out there. You're putting headlines out there. You're getting people to talk about you. You know what I'm saying? It, it takes a Mookie Betts trade for us to talk about baseball. Okay. And it's just going to go under the bridge, like water under bridge, like nothing within a day or two. And everybody will forget about it because it's baseball. And I was just looking at those examples of John Morant and Steph about Julian Edelman, all of this. These are things that I wish baseball players would wake up and look at how they need to grow their sport. Because you think about it, if the Red Sox are worried about money, that's not a good thing. That's kind of weird, and I'm wondering what the landscape of baseball... See, because I'm one of those guys that thinks, I th I believe logically, and I think the money's going to start shrinking in baseball. Because as attendance drops, as uh, interest plummets ratings plummet how the hell do you keep the money going there's no way of doing that if less and less people are interested in baseball advertisers and tv stations or tv broadcasting networks are going to know that so there's no way the same kind of flow or even bigger flow is going to be coming in and i wonder if the red sox were thinking that you know, I heard Jeff Passan talk about, well, you know, the Dodgers, they had flexibility and they had, you know, a great uh, minor league and all that. Yeah, it's great, but uh, the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Cubs, those are teams that normally don't worry about money. It's kind of weird that, that the Red Sox are so worried that they need to get under the luxury tax. And remember, the Red Sox own their own network. So they have another, you know, stream of revenue that's coming in that a lot of teams don't have because there's a lot of teams, they may have a TV deal, but they don't have a TV network. When you've got Yes and you've got Nesson and you got stuff like that, that's, that's a lot of money that you got coming in. So it's, it's really weird, you know what I mean? The, the Mookie Betts trade yesterday, and, and I'm looking at the Edelman stuff, and it, there's a lot of correlations to all of this. And I think the people that are seam heads, they may not see it coming or they are trying to avoid it and not talk about it. But the owners have got to know that their sport is no longer growing anymore. It is now declining. And so I don't know what they do, but their players aren't like Julian Edelman. And they're not like Steph Curry, and they're certainly not like John Morant. Can you imagine? John Morant is a rookie. A rookie with swag. A rookie that is the rookie of the year. Okay? And this guy's out there leading his team as a rookie. And he's out there tweeting to the world and taking on Steph Curry. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's some juice, man. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, but when I saw that that Edelman thing, I was like, okay, this is this is definitely you know something that baseball desperately needs in a big time way.